Hello viewer, a very warm welcome to Elimu TV where you watch and learn. I'm your teacher, Madam Christine Okot, taking you through biology form 3. Hey, I would like to thank all of you who gave us your feedback, you answered our questions and uh, I'll ask you to continue doing the same. You can reach us, uh, you can write to us. Our SMS number is 4007. You can also write to us uh, on our Facebook page which is Elimu TV. You can also write to us, our Twitter handle is at Elimu TV underscore KE. Thank you and uh, 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 we're going to look at our review of our lesson, Monera. Then lastly, I'm going to give you an assignment. So let us first review our previous assignment. The assignment was, what is the difference between taxonomy and classification? And the second assignment was, define binomial nomenclature and state one reason why it is important. So uh, for the first question, uh, the difference between classification and uh, taxonomy. So classification is the arrangement of organisms according to a set of principles, whereas taxonomy is the most respectable classification system. So when you relate the two, classification is a branch, uh, taxonomy, sorry, is a branch of biology that deals with grouping of organisms according to their structures and their ways of life. And it basically deals with, deals with the scientific way of naming organism. Whereas classification is just the broad term used to define grouping organisms according to their structure and their way of life. Uh, so classification, uh, the second question was uh, why uh, define binomial nomenclature and uh, state why classification it is important. So binomial nomenclature as we had defined is a naming system whereby an organism is given two names, one being a genus and another being a species. Then, why is this classification very important? It is important because it allows scientists to identify, group, and properly name organism using the standardized system which is well recognized, the Linus taxonomy. So how do we classify this organism? Basing on their similarities found in the organisms, which is the DNA and the RNA, that is uh, in genetics. Then we also classify them according to their adaptation, that is evolution. How are they ad adapted to their habitats or their environment? Then they're also classified according to their embryonic development. I remember a branch of biology called embryology. So to others known organism to better study and understand the new organism as a whole. So that is one importance of classification. So Monera, this is a kingdom, uh, the first kingdom. Uh, it's called Monera. So what is Monera? So this is a Greek word which means single. The kingdom Monera include organisms that are single-celled known as bacteria. So from uh, the Greek word Monera, which means single. So uh, organisms which belong to this kingdom, they are single cell. It means they only have one cell. So the microorganisms in kingdom Monera are considered as the most ancient living forms on earth. They are very old according to the history. So these cells, they do not have a nuclear membrane. Uh, they are also known as prokaryotes, a Greek word still, which means single cell organism that lack a membrane bound nuclear. Uh, in the normal organisms, like the multicellular organisms, they have a membrane uh, bound for the nucleus and uh, mitochondrium. So these types of uh, organisms, prokaryotes, also known as the moneras, they do not have a nuclear, the, the membrane bound is absent in their cells. So we have two types of uh, bacteria. Uh, it's an example of the Monera Kingdom. We have the Archibacteria. These are bacteria which live in very harsh environment, as we are going to see we, as we continue with our lesson. Then there are, there's another type of bacteria which are known as the Eubacteria, which are found everywhere within the habitats. Uh, wherever we stay, uh, everywhere, they are just found in all types of habitats and ecosystems. So an example of a structure of Monera, so this is a structure of a bacteria. 
uh, bacteria is the main example in the Monera kingdom. So as you can look at their structure, uh, we have the flagellas, which they, are, uh, they use it for the movement. Uh, we have the pili, we have the ribosomes, we have the DNA material. As you can see, uh, there is no membrane bound of in the DNA. We have the cell wall there, the cytoplasm, and the plasma membrane. So this is how a bacteria cell looks like. So going to look at the characteristics of Monera, what are some of these characters that make an organism to be under the kingdom of Monera? One is the DNA. The DNA, uh, what is it? It's a double-stranded double form suspended in the cytoplasm of the organism. It's referred as the nucleus. So DNA is the material which is mainly uh, in the genetic processes. It's the one that helps in the uh, genetic processes. Uh, then a rigid cell wall is present in these moneras. So as you can look at the illustration of a bacteria, you can spot the DNA in the middle there with the bluish uh, color. Then uh, you can spot also the cytoplasm. It's the light blue structure side there. Then you can see the flag flagellum, which is used for the movement. When you look at their cell walls, they are very rigid. Then membrane-bound cell organelles like the mitochondriums are absent. So these types of organisms, they do not have mitochondrium, the double cellular organelles in them. So that is a structure. Then another characteristic of Monera, we can identify them by their sizes. They are very small compared to other cells. So most bacteria are uh, 0 0.2 micrometer in diameter and 2 to 8 uh, micrometer in length. So you can imagine the size because uh, if you compare, you do the mathematics, one micrometer is uh, equivalent to one million meter. So you can imagine how uh, the Monera, they are very tiny. So uh, you can look at the size of a bacteria along our illustration. So the bacteria are not easy to measure using meters, centimeters, or even millimeters. So that's why it has been recognized that uh, by measuring the bacteria, we use this micro meta and they are the tiniest organisms that we can ever find in a habitat or in an env environment. So another characteristic, we have the first one we call the bacilli, uh, it's like a rod shaped. Then we have another shape of the monera, the bacteria, that is they are cocas. They are spherical. Then we have another uh, type of shape that is mainly found in bacteria, which is the spirillum. It looks like a spiral. Then we have another shape. The fourth shape is spirochet. Uh, this is like a corkscrew, uh, as in the illustration, you can see the fourth one. Then the last type of shape of bacteria is the vibrio. It is just like a coma. So these are the main five ways you can identify a bacteria using the five different shapes. Then another main uh, characteristic of, of Monera uh, is their habitat. Uh, this type of uh, organisms, they are present in both living and in and living environment. They can also survive in very harsh and extreme climatic condition like in the hot springs, in acidic soils, in hot areas and also in cold areas. So they are found everywhere in the environment regardless of the condition in extreme uh, environment also in the harsh environment. They can survive in both environments. So for example, we have some that can live in the hot spring, like the geishas, as we, can, uh, we all know the geishas. These are the hot springs in which water boils frequently. So they boil sending a tall column of water and steam into the air. So the temperature of this place is very high and the water is steaming up from the surface uh, to the surface. So you can imagine the bacteria they are in position to live in this uh, place where the temperatures are very high. So that is another characteristic. Also, they can be in a position to live in cold uh, environment like the desert. Uh, these are bacteria, they can be found anywhere. Also, they can be found in salty uh, environment, uh, as in Lake Magadi. Uh, Lake Magadi is one of a uh, lake found in Kenya. So uh, the environment there is very salty, but still, these bacteria, they can be found in such harsh conditions. 
Uh, they are also found in acidic areas, uh, for example in Kericho. Uh, these are tea, tea, tea growing area. When you look at their pH, uh, it is 4 to 6.5. Yet the bacteria are still found in such areas. So that's why it makes them to be distinctive and uh, they can be just found in any type of uh, environment. They can also be found in extreme acidic areas, uh, that is like in the mining site where the acidity level is very high. They can also be found in extreme alkaline areas uh, or the water bodies. Uh, so the bacteria, they are very, they can be found in all those places. Then we can also identify uh, this group of organism basing on their nutrition. Uh, for example, we have an illustration here. We have two types of bacterial. We have the heterotrophic and the autotrophs. Autotrophs, these are organisms that make their own food. They make their own food. They can either use uh, the process of photosynthesis, that is using of light, or they can use chemosynthesis, that is using of chemical to make their own food. Whereas we have another different type of uh, bacteria, which are the heterotrophs. This one, they are not in position to make their own food because they lack uh, the photo, uh, they cannot uh, make their own food, they do not have the chlorophyll matter, or they cannot undergo the chemosynthesis. So example of these uh, bacteria are the saprophytes, for example, the bacteria. Uh, then we also have the bac bacteria, an example of it, we have the streptococci, which feeds on other organisms. Uh, so saprophytes, these are organisms that feed off on the gain organism, while parasites, they grow inside the tissue of other organism and obtain food at the expense of the host. So they bring harm to the host while they feed, but the saprophyte, they do not bring harm because they are already feeding on dead, decaying matter. So how do they circulate uh, their uh, materials? Uh, they, these are organisms, for example, the bacteria, they use this process uh, we call diffusion. Remember, they are unicellular, so they can easily diffuse materials inside and outside of their cell. So if the food mo molecule, if they need oxygen, they can easily diffuse the oxygen material inside the organism, inside the cell, and the byproduct which they do not need, the carbon dioxide, it can be easily removed by carbon dioxide. So that is how they circulate their materials they need in their bodies. So how do you also identify the Monera? Uh, by their movement. Uh, they use this uh, item called the flagella. As you can see, uh, the flagella, they help in the movement of uh, the cells. Uh, it's like uh, the tails in the fish. So that uh, flagella, they use it to swash around so that they can easily move around. Then, another characteristics of Monera, you can identify them through reproduction. They undergo a sexual reproduction, uh, mainly it's called binary fusion. So reproduction is through binary fusion. This is a method of sexual reproduction that involves uh, the splitting of one parent into two approximately equal cells. So you can look at our illustration there. We have the mother cell, which is the main parent. Then it's going to split into a daughter cell. So the cell will elongate, elongate and the replication of the DNA inside the cell. Then the DNA molecule separates across a uh, cross wall, starting to form two pairs. Then uh, finally, the daughter, the daughter cell will be formed. So the parent retains it, uh, it has the DNA, but the daughter cell, it has split the DNA. So this one just involves one parent cell to form uh, the other daughter cell. Another characteristic of Monera is through respiration. Uh, respiration, this is mainly the breakdown of chemical component using oxygen to release energy. So this kind of organisms, they undergo the process of respiration. Uh, they break down the component so they can obtain food and energy using their respiration. All bacteria, they need a constant supply of energy. They need energy for movement and they need energy for other things that they do inside the cell. So the energy comes from the breaking down of food in the process of 
respiration. So most bacteria, they need oxygen to break down their food, but there are a few that do not need oxygen. They can do the process of respiration without the presence of the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So we have the two types of respiration. We have aerobic uh, bacteria. Uh, we have the obligate anaerobes. So the aerobic bacteria, this one, they require free oxygen to carry out cellular respiration. So respiration cannot take place unless the oxygen is present. Then the obligate anaerobes, this one, they do not require any oxygen for cellular respiration. Then still under the obligate anaerobes, we have the two types. Uh, we have the obligate anaerobes and the falca falcatative anaerobes. The obligates, they cannot live in the presence of oxygen. It's just the opposite of human. A uh, human, you must need oxygen for survival. But this one, the presence of oxygen is very harmful to them. They cannot live, they cannot tolerate the presence of oxygen. While in the facultative anaerobes, they can live in either the presence of ox uh, or the absence of oxygen. So this one, they have an option. Either they can survive in the presence of oxygen or without the presence of oxygen. But the obligates, uh, they cannot uh, withstand the presence of oxygen. So what are some of the effects of these bacteria? Uh, so they are, everything has a good side and a bad side. So uh, what are some of the benefits of, the, the, of bacteria? One, it helps to digest waste as uh, sewage plants. So the process of uh, digesting the waste product, the sewage, it helps to cap down the sewages which are around our environment. Then the chemical industry, they help in the making of the acetone and the butanol. In, in the pharmaceuticals, it also helps in the making of the vitamins, antibiotics and the insulins. Uh, it also helps in the production of food products, uh, food products like the yogurt, cheese and alcohol beverage. They use the bacteria to help in their manufacturing. Then they are also decomposers, they are also nitrogen fixers and they also undergo the process of helping symbiosis. Another good side, we call them the good bacteria, uh, in vitamin, uh, the vitamin K. So these organisms, the bacteria, they live in the intestines uh, where they receive nourishment and in turn they produce vitamin K. So these are mutual relationship between the living organisms and the bacteria. So uh, these bacteria, they receive a place where they can feed and they live So the, uh, while they produce the help in the production of vitamin K, which is a very essential vitamin in the process of the blood coating. So these bacteria, they receive a place to live and feed while keeping other harmful microbes from taking up residence. So these are the good bacteria. They are like the watchmen. So they keep the bad bacteria away while they live in the uh, systems of the human beings. Uh, the vitamin B, so these are the bacterial and some yeast spices. They are also responsible for producing vitamin D. Though these organisms are not commonly found within the human intestines, they are mainly found with the ruminants, which are the cows and the goats. So that's another good thing about these bacteria. Now, what's the bad thing about these bacteria? Most of them, they cause diseases. So bacteria causes diseases in both plants and animals. They cause crops and livestock losses uh, that impacts to human indirectly. So there are some bacterial infection that, uh, uh, that affect the human beings and also they affect the plants and also other organisms. So these bacteria, they cause human diseases. For example, a well-known disease caused by bacteria is the cholera, uh, which is transmitted by uh, contaminated water. Uh, the bacteria which causes this type of diseases is called Vibrio cholera. We also have the bubonic plague which is transmitted by the flea. So the diseases causing bacteria, they enter the body maybe through the opening such as the mouth. So these are some of the diseases which are caused by bacteria. We have cholera, typhoid, leprosy, plague, tetanus, anthrax, tuberculosis, whooping cough, diphtheria, pneumonia, 
and diarrheal disease. So if you didn't know uh, these are diseases, these are just among the diseases which are caused by bacterial. They are infected uh, by bacterial infection diseases. So we still have a more example of diseases uh, which are caused by bacteria. For example, the plague. It is caused by a bacteria uh, known as the Yersinia pertis. Uh, the cholera, as we have already talked about, it's caused by a bacteria called the Vibrio cholera. We have gonorrhea, which is caused by a bacteria known as Neisseria gonorrhea. Anthrax, uh, caused by Bacillus anthra anthracis. Tetanus, it's caused by Clostridium tetani and dysentery is called by Shingella dysentery. When you look at this name, for example, the Vibrio, you will know the shape of the bacteria that has caused. It is Vibrio, it is comma shaped. Uh, when you look at another example, the Bacillus, you will know it is caused uh, by the Bacillus shaped uh, bacteria. Uh, so bacteria, how are these uh, bacteria uh, infected or how do they, they, do they spread? One, it's by physical contact with an infected person. For example, uh, the spread of cholera. For example, somebody has gone and uh, has not washed his hand properly. Then uh, he comes and greets another person. So you can easily touch the, uh, the, you can easily get the infection through contact with that person when you greet him. Then when you touch food which are unhygienic using the hands, then afterwards maybe you forget to wash your hands. So it will be like ingesting uh, the bacterials. So this one is also another way in which you can get the bacterial infection. Then another uh, way in which you can get the bacterial is through the transmission of body food. Now our lesson for today, I would like to thank you and uh, I'll give you an assignment and the assignment will be what is the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction? Then, bacteria uh, that live in extreme conditions are known as, so give the name of the bacteria that live in the extreme condition. I've been your teacher, Madam Christine Okot. Stay tuned to Elimu TV. Thank you.